joining. I, was, I honestly wasn't sure who was going to show up. So thank you. I appreciate it. Um, if, you, if we've not met each other, uh, my name is Asia. Uh, a little bit about me. Um, the guy who was running around and helped set up a lot of um, LTN Con uh, is my husband, Luke. Um, and um, I'm really excited to talk about um, this concept of real life online, uh, whatever that means. Um, and a little background, I, um, I have a full-time job, but on the side, I um, am a content creator, I stream, um, I do cooking streams, um, some like chill gaming, and I do chill gaming because I enjoy it, but not because I'm good at it. It's one of, one of those. Um, do some digital art, um, like some co-working streams. Um, I used to do just like cooking content before I was streaming. And so I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit or we can ask, we, we can have time for questions later. Um, but that's just a little bit of like what goes behind um, some of the stuff we're talking about today. In addition to that, I am a huge um, personality um, and cultural, cultural analysis nerd. Um, so I love um, talking about ways people are wired and how, um, where you grew up and your families and whatever influences how you communicate with each other. Um, I, yeah, I just love all that stuff. I don't think I'm the most articulate person, which is ironic because I really enjoy nerding out about communication, but I'll do my best. So thank you for bearing with me. Um, there's food here if you guys didn't get any, but um, yeah, I guess we'll get started. Um, okay, so when um, some of the people from LTNCon uh, planning team approached me about talking about, I think the words they used was, what are the realities of real life online? Can you talk about that? I really struggled to find like, where to even start? Because that's such a broad question or a broad topic. Um, and as I was trying to come up with different categories of like different scenarios you can find yourself online, I realized I had to really dial it back to um, how we're wired as people and then how we are wired as people influences the way that we communicate online, how we connect with others online, um, and how while that's its own um, context, it's not a completely different like way of relating with people than we do in real in like IRL. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about that if you guys can bear with me. <laughs> um, so. Um, one of the um, places I'm coming from as I talk about this, um, a few years ago, me and Luke, me and my husband, we um, really were struggling uh, with just forming friendships and really f um, like finding a gospel-centered um, like basis of building friendships and like what to expect from people in friendships. And um, I think part of that had to do with like, we both grew up for, on an island called Guam. Um, I was born and raised there, he was raised there. And like that really influenced like how communal we were with people, very like warm culture, very island culture. And then we moved to the States and it was very different. And we didn't really know like if we were being selfish in our expectations or if we like should just learn to assimilate to an, an extent um, with with um, people in church culture, in like college culture at that time or in work and life, whatever. Um, and so it got to a point um, where we were just like, yeah, just really yearning um, for friendship. And in the midst of that, um, Luke started to stream um, uh, on Twitch before he really was connected with LTN or anything. Um, just like hoping to build friendships with people by like having a common interest um, and specifically like online gaming. Um, and I was trying to do that as well with like post, uh, putting cooking content up on like YouTube and Instagram and other places and eventually finding my way to streaming. At first I was like, there's no way. And then, you know, that's, that's how it goes. Um, and so um, that just like, made us so hungry for like intentionally doing life with people. We were coming from a place of like, we want these things and we are uh, attempting to, um, to um, love people in the way that we are like wanting to be loved. But we were like, yeah, just trying to balance, like how do, how do I do that online or, or in real life? And like, how can I do that online in a way that's not coming from a place of like, um, like bitterness towards like any relationships we were having in real life, um, but instead just being life-giving and being open to um, how people would um, affect us. Um, so it really, we were 
I'm grateful for this. I'm grateful that the Lord like really um, protected our hearts against like being angry or bitter or whatever at like these relationship struggles we were having and coming uh, like going into the online space uh, with a desire to connect with people. And that's really what I want to talk about is like, like what is what is it that draws us to each other? Like, why can't we just enjoy the things we enjoy by ourselves and be okay with that? Even and like even enjoy our relationship with the Lord and whatever we like to do, and that's it. Like, why can't we just be good there? And why do we seek? Why do we all, to an extent, we are all driven to like have some sort of relational connection with and with people outside of ourselves and outside our relationship with the Lord. Um, so hopefully, I'm good on time. I didn't even look. Um, we are sensitive to community, which might sound like a weird, like, term to associate with community, but, um, real life, our lives it, are really nuanced and multifaceted. Um, we can scarcely capture what real life, um, online looks like without acknowledging that we ourselves are sensitive, uh, to community. And I use that term because I want to relate it to kind of, I don't know, you don't, don't attack me, um, kind of to like the force and how, we, how um, <laughs> in Star Wars universe, uh, there are people that are sensitive to the force and to, to people or just like beings that are, um, that have like a force connection and like we, they are seeking out those, um, those relationships and I feel like we are the same in our real lives um, by like we all know each other ha has a desire to connect with with each other which is it seems like a weird thing to say but um, um, yeah so I think where that comes from and I believe other theologians would agree with me that um, it comes from God the Trinity and um, I think a really beautiful picture for us of what like true community looks like is how we observe the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and how they really celebrate each other and glorify each other and like are as like much of a unit as possible even though there are three separate you know triune God and um, he created us for community community with him obviously but not just with him individually, but with other people. And so this desire that drives us to connect when we feel lonely, when we're feeling like we want those relationships, like that is not a bad thing. It's not like you're not content with your relationship with the Lord. So you, you just need to learn to be content with that and just be that way. Like God has created us for connection. And, and there are times and seasons where for, uh, those connections may not be um, in great supply but it's not bad to desire those things. Um, so um, one of the gifts that he gives us is the ability to create friendships. And um, people can be, um, and I can be, uh, just like nervous when it comes to building friendships because you get worried about like splitting your love for one person and another person, especially as you continue to build your friendship groups. Um, but I really love how um, C.S. Lewis uh, talks about friendship in The Four Loves, which is really funny that, um, that we talked about The Four Loves a lot, but C.S. Lewis is my homie, so. Um, <laughs> So I really love what he says here. True friendship is the least jealous of loves. Two friends delighted to be joined by a third uh, and three by a fourth. If a newcomer is qualified to be, uh, be a real friend, they can say as the blessed souls in Dante, here comes the one who will augment our loves. For in this love to divide is not to take away. Within those limits, we possess each friend, no, not less, but more the number uh, with whom we share him increases. In this friendship exhi exhibits a glorious nearness to the resemblance to heaven itself, where the multitude of the blessed, which no man can number, increases the fruition which each has with God. Which I think is so beautiful. Like, um, just like we observe the Trinity and like God has endless love and gives to us endlessly as we build friendships, it's like, um, you know, not in a perfect way, but it's like endlessly life-giving in a sense. Um, and in that like world of friendship, we find ourselves with like different facets of that. Like we have one-on-one -on -one friendships, we have like small circles of friends and we have large circles. Um, and we can relate to each other and love each other as friends in all three of those categories and probably more categories that I'm not thinking of. Um, uh, but we ha have, it's not like we can opt in on the ability. We like, the Lord has created us with the, the ability to affect and be affected by those relationships, by our communities. Um, so 
in that sense, our ability to connect with people, to build those relationships, for better or for worse, um, is like the force. Um, and uh, in C.S. Lewis's book, he talks about three types of love. We have need love, gift love, and appreciative love. So the way he describes it is like, need love would be like someone um, um, like thinking they can't live without their wife. And a gift love would be like someone being like, oh, I, I just want to provide for her. I want to give her anything that she needs. I want to just be there for her. And you're gifting uh, to her. And appreciative love, I don't want to like, I, I don't think I do it justice. I'm just going to read what C.S. Lewis says here. Um, he says, appreciative love gazes and holds its breath and is silent, rejoices that such a wonder should exist, even if not for him, will not be wholly dejected by losing her, would rather have it um, so that, it to, oh, sorry, oh, I'm butchering it, um, would rather have it so that never to have seen her at all. So basically, um, like, appreciative love is like appreciating the relationship itself. And so I think that's a great way to view friendship as well, um, as we can come at friendship uh, from like a selfish place where we're like really wanting to just take whatever we can from these friendships. And I think like we all are susceptible to that because of our our nature, but like when we are grounded in um, like, like um, participating in the community that the Lord has created for us, um, we have the ability to um, really immerse ourselves in those relationships in those three categories. Um, and C.S. Lewis also says um, this, this like ability to um, participate in these three types of love is a real but all adorable image of divine life. So we're being like God in that sense, um, in, in presence. We are right to thank God who has given such power to men. So cool. Um, so by design, we have the ability to affect our commu communities. And this power is neutral and could be used positively um, to reflect God nature and the Trinity's nature, or it can be used negatively if we are not coming from that place. Um, so it's a lot of like conceptual stuff, but I really want to talk about how that applies to like our life online. And I'm going to book at the time real quick. Okay, cool. We're good. Um, uh, so we are force sensitive or we are sensitive to community and we will break physical boundaries in that pursuit. Um, it's a false dichotomy to say that um, the way in which I relate and communicate with people in real life is completely a different category altogether than how we communicate uh, online. And while I, I do, I want to emphasize that the way, like, it's a different context. So the way that you communicate with, with someone in real life will be different uh, than online. It's not like two completely separate categories. Uh, we just have to approach the online space um, coming from everything we've talked about so far. Um, so just some little stats, because what would a presentation be without any stats? Um, so 4.70 billion people around the world now use social media. 227 million new users has come online, have come online within the last 12 months, according to Smart Insights. Um, and there are a bunch of reasons that I can list uh, for why people have joined um, the online space, but uh, whether it be like, um, buying products or joining streams or finding content sharing exchanging of information but really as we know like as believers people that are created um, by god it distills down to a desire to connect with people you want to like share in those things that you are interested in or um, you want to like share in relationships with people build those friendships um, and so it is like such an awesome opportunity to um, be intentional in how we connect with people online. Um, we can improve our ability of um, force wielding, I guess, um, <laughs> by uh, God, uh, by allowing um, community to grow us. God uses community to grow us, and online community is no exception. Um, and so I, like, honestly, people have a, people can have um, a false uh, perspective of how we communicate with people online. We can be like, you know, you're not developing social skills. You're you're not developing like how to speak tactfully and how to speak graciously. But it can be a um, a space for communicating in a way that like grows you and teaches you to be more gracious and more loving. If you're looking for those opportunities, um, and there is there's like a range of abilities. So 
life online is an umbrella of types of relationships and types of like spaces uh, where you're having these relationships. So to any content creators out there, any streamers out there, um, or Discord hosts, um, the host the host community. So people that are like creating these spaces for people to come and converse. Um, you set the tone as you welcome people into your home, into your virtual space. And um, while it's very easy to think about like creating these spaces like, as like building your brand, making it very you, making it your message and what you want to like bring to the online world. Um, ultimately you are creating like an environment for people that you would have not had a connection with to come here. And that is a, an amazing opportunity to um, host people like you're hosting in your home, like asking them about their lives and building those relationships um, in ways that you discern that are fit for the spaces that you're creating. Um, and um, I, I try to um, create uh, or to have that drive as I like make content and I as I like host the my streams. Um, I really want it to be a space where I'm not just like not just updating people on my life or just talking about myself, but I really want to know what everyone's up to, what are the things that they are um, engaging with, and sh the struggles they're having, the things that they're really excited about, the the papers that they're uh, that they got a good a uh, an A on, or um, how work has been a, a struggle, but they're making it through. Like I want those spaces uh, to be like. Uh, just as a, a virtual space for people to come sit down on your couch and like get to know you and you get to know them um, but I think when we when we think about online communities we, we kind of stop there we think about like, uh, okay what, what can I do as a host but as the hosted community there is also an opportunity here honestly I think a better opportunity than the person that's hosting to develop those relationships with people because there's only one host but there are so many members or so many viewers depending on your uh, context um, and um, you can lean on or sorry that's that's not what I'm trying to say um, you can um, reach out to people in that community in a way that the one host who is trying to make sure everyone is feeling welcome to like have individual conversations or those small group conversations like think about when you go to a party and you have the one person who's making sure that like oh, everyone has drinks everyone has food um you can like sit with three people and have a really deep conversation about life or laugh until your head hurts or whatever and you can have those sweet relationships in a way that the host may not be able to in that moment and that's such a cool and sweet thing um and so i've like really been um like my heart has just been touched by the ways that people in like my experience in my community have been able to come alongside new people that join the the, the group or join the uh, the chat uh, to make them feel welcomed, even if they have no idea what's going on, or um, just come alongside um, people that they they know mentioned last time that that we were together that they were struggling with. I don't know, buying a car um, and they can follow up in, in those ways. And I think that's such a great opportunity there where you don't have to like worry about the space existing. You just have to be there for people, which is really cool. And like ultimately that like leads for opportunities to have one on one relationships where you can, um, you know, connect with these people in these spaces and then like, you know, DM uh, or DM it with each other or um, join like a, a server that you want to be in together and continue to develop those relationships. And ultimately, as you get to know them better, um, most uniquely and most like contextualized, no, that's the wrong word, whatever, um, <laughs> love on these people as you get to know them. Um, and uh, we also get the ability to, or we, we get, we have the gift of receiving, uh, be on the receiving end of, um, relationship building uh, on the online or in the online space um, he uh, God has created us for community and he uses community as a, a means to grow us and to sharpen us um, whether that means like physically like if people are giving you gifts that you know like will help you uh, because you've built those relationships with them or just like having a word of encouragement like it's just an awesome opportunity to receive that in this like context but Let's be real, sometimes we are the objects of poorly, of this um, force wielding uh, being used on us in a negative way. Um, when people are coming into these online spaces, um, whether it's in Discord or Twitch or an Instagram post, whatever, um, they could be coming at a place where they 
um, want to feel powerful because they're coming from a place where they are not feeling powerful. Um, and like as I was typing this part of my outline, um, I was doing a co-working stream, which just is a weird way to say I, uh, I go live and I just work and chat with people who may be working, may not be working. And um, as I was typing this part, um, some someone came into the chat who had never joined before, just being a little, a little trolly, it was okay, who said very um, not nice things about me and how I looked and stuff. And um, when you are not, when you are co going into an online space, not um, grounded in, you know, the relationship, like positive relationships with the, around you, a relationship with the Lord, um, then it's very easy to um, take comments like that personally. Um, but when you are grounded, you're able to respond to that in love, whether that means, you know, in this case, unfortunately, it just meant like a ban because it was not protecting the rest of the people in that community or like a, a, in a different context. If you have built that relationship and they say and someone says something that seems out of character or seems like not loving <laughs> in the space, like you have like the the relational currency, I guess, to um, to just like come alongside them and be like, hey, did you mean to say it this way? Because this is how it came across. And you are able to like, um, hopefully grow your relationship together um, through that conflict resolution moment. Um, and also remember, as you are finding, like thinking of ways to engage in your online spaces and to ha to like really acknowledge your real life online as well as other people's real lives online. Remember you're a community, you're not doing this by yourself. Um, you don't have to be the person bur uh, like carrying the burden of making sure every single person that you could possibly ever meet online <laughs> is feeling uh, related to. Like the Lord will lead ways and like um, opportunities for you to connect with others and that's okay if like you will you connect with, with I don't know, say three people really well, and then these other two people you may not as well. Um, that's all right. That's why it's a community. We're not doing this by ourselves. And, um, you know, it, it, it can feel, um, I don't know, a lot. You can feel pressure. Or I can feel pressure. I don't know. I'm always, like, in my head, and I'm always uh, my worst critic, and I can always think, like, oh, I should have engaged with them better. I should have been way more intentional. I hope that they felt, like, uh, welcomed here. But we have to remember that we are all Jedi in training and we have the perfect master who is always teaching us um, ways to be, um, you know, just love people better. And, and in that, we, are, we also grow. So engaging in online community helps us holistically, individually with, e uh, sorry, individually with each other and with online community and with our local communities as well. Um, so circling back to this struggle that I was uh, describing that me and Luke were having before, uh, and you know, not not to say that we never struggle in that way. Um, as we were yearning for those relationships, and and then thankfully finding them online, we found that it had come full circle. And ways that we um, were ministered to, and the ways that we were able to minister to people online, the Lord like created opportunities with some of those old relationships and with new relationships in person to um, like take those um, beautiful gifts of the Lord gave through those relationships and um, gift like paid for it, I guess, with um, with these relationships in real life, which I thought was so beautiful. And I want to close by reading the end of um, this friendship chapter. So good. You guys need to read this book. It's so good. Um, <laughs> from C.S. Lewis of uh, The Four Loves. Uh, friendships are like all beauties derived from him or God. Uh, and then in good friendship, increased by him through friendship itself, so that uh, it is his instrument for creating as well as revealing. Uh, at this feast, it is he who has spread the board, and it is he who has chosen the guests. It is he, uh, we may dare hope, who sometimes does and always should preside. Let us not reckon without our host. So the Lord is creating these opportunities for us, and he knows like what relationships are in store for us, and we just have to be willing and intentional and um, I just hope that this gives you hope as you uh, enter into these online communities that you may be already a part of or that you discover that um, you'll be able to receive um, that human connection and are, are able to give it as well. So thank you. <laughs> uh, any questions about anything? Yes? 
just for like balancing online uh, connection and real life connection? Yeah. Like you can't just be online. Right, right. No, that's so a great question. How do you balance those? Yeah. Um, so I think that, like I said, there's it, it's a false economy to think that like re relationships happen in person or online, like it's both. Um, so as you are in those online spaces and you're talking about you know, how much you value those relationships. Um, it, it, yeah, if you are only invested in those online spaces, you miss out on opportunities to, um, you know, kind of come full circle and uh, take, you know, the, 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 the lessons that you learn in these online spaces don't just apply there. And so being able to circle around that, if you can, I know there, there are um, contexts where maybe the, your um, in-person circle is not as large, but whatever you're able to do, I think it really, it, it really um, enriches you in a more holistic way if you're able to um, chew and dive into relationships in both um, spaces as you know as you're able to so yeah I think it's really important to not just focus on one um, because you're you're getting a limited um, experience there when it comes to relationship building uh, so yeah we need hugs, yeah we need yeah, hugs yeah. we need hugs <laughs> it's so true <laughs> Anything else? Yeah. I'm just curious how you apply some of these ideas to remote work. Yes. Because since COVID, mm -hmm. uh, most people had at least some experience with remote work. Yeah. Before COVID, I worked for a social organization where all my coworkers lived in different time zones. Mm. So the remote online work was normal. Mm -hmm. so looking back, that was actually some really great online community. Yeah. Yeah. That's their online work community. Right, right. No, I love that question. Um, I also work remotely, so I get that. And um, yeah, I think it, it really is, honestly, the things I'm talking about, it, it just, it, it's a matter of intention. So yes, I can communicate, like I have to communicate with my coworkers in order to exchange whatever, in, or like give them whatever information they need to do their job. It's like very, tr it can be very transactional, obviously, that's what work is. Um, but um, you can also use that opportunity or that channel as a, a chance to build those friendships. So I have um, actually told him that I was recording, so I, he might be listening, right? Or you might eventually listen to this recording. But um, one of the guys that I work with, um, we found out that there were like a couple things that we had in common. I don't even know how we like, you know, just, just how it goes when you're having conversation um, in like meeting settings or whatever. Sometimes you're like, hey, you have this connection here. Um, and I think it, it's just like the matter of um, taking that step to share that GIF, GIF, whatever you guys say, um, image that you know will make them laugh or that can like be a um, icebreaker moment between you, uh, between uh, coworkers or whatever. And you just kind of create opportunities to have more relational conversation. And from then, I, honestly, just asking questions, like asking, how, you know, you just came back from the weekend and now you're both back at work answering the tickets. You can say like, hey, what'd you do this weekend? And like, sure, it could be very surfacey, but I think if you're um, like genuine in your desire to like engage with people, you'd be so surprised how over time, maybe not instantly, but how over time that can be reciprocated with you. Once they like are, see that you're not just like, I don't know, trying to be, uh, I, don't know, I don't even know what I was gonna say there, but um, uh, when you when they can see that you're genuine and you're asked, like they will they will open up and like he and I now nerd out about like cartoons we're watching or like music that we're into and it's just really cool to see that like that that um, relationship went from just like hey I don't know how to troubleshoot this to oh this is so funny what this is such an awkward in interaction I just saw this TikTok and this relates to work and then from there you're asking or you're saying like hey my girlfriend's really struggling with her health right now. And um, so if you just think about her, like, like I hope that like you're, uh, she's in your prayers or whatever. Like those, those um, uh, conversations happen, they can happen naturally, it just requires intention. So that would be, just intention is like the big, <laughs> the big thing and the courage to just press send. <laughs> so anyone else? Yeah. yeah. Online community is kind of like real community. You can have good social distancing things. Mm -hmm. How do you help or maintain connection with those who can't really see you or are blocking their, their life? Or, uh, like in the online space or, yeah. Either one. 
Yeah, no, that's great. Um, I think like, um, uh, th I'm only speaking from my experience. I think like making people feel seen and heard that like it is okay. There is no pressure for you to like be in the space constantly because we all have lives. <laughs> uh, I think like that goes a long way because sometimes people can feel the need to be in like a stream or like chatting in a, a Discord channel because they feel like almost a sense of obligation um, to because like you know I've I really like even if there's good intention behind it like I really love this community and so I want people to feel like loved and I want people to like feel like I am um, I'm here for them but like if there are things going on in your life that you cannot like be there all the time like I think um, the, the person who's hosting or the, the person who's observing that like person that's not there as often I think just like reaching out to say hey I know that uh, um, how are you doing first of all <laughs> and to um, like I know so you haven't been on here enough or uh, not enough on here <laughs> a lot often um, <laughs> but uh, I just want you to know that like I, I miss you but um, like how can I help you? Um, and I think just like noticing, noticing that they're not he there that often and um, taking it a step further to reach out if you're able to, um, just to say I'm here for you, but like also no pressure, like if you need to take the time you need uh, to get whatever stuff in your life situated, uh, go for it. I think people just wanna feel seen um, more than they wanna have constant conversation and constant engagement. And I, th I think that goes a long way. And like, like I said, it's uh, because if you feel the pressure to be that person, to like keep connecting with them, you are also not creating uh, like healthy boundaries for yourself. And I, I'm kinda, gonna kind of tangent here. Um, I can struggle with personal boundaries, not to like put too many, but I will just keep giving and giving and giving. Um, but it took, it, I can't remember what I was going through in particular, but I realized that if I wanted to love in the way that I feel called to, to be to make people feel at home in whatever space, if that's online or at my house or at a coffee shop or at work or whatever, if I want people to feel that way, I have to make sure that I acknowledge that the Lord made me um, a, as a soul and as a, a body, a physical body. And if I'm not like um, like doing the things for my whole self to be energized to engage in those relationships then as i'm like making myself engage in these relationships people are uh, experiencing a shell of who i am and so if i'm not like committing that or taking that time to restore myself then yeah i'm not able to love in the way that i want to anyways so i think boundaries are good <laughs> that was not the question but <laughs> it went there uh anything else Yeah, it is. You do have multiple layers of your community, so it has this on like the Twitch, but the also the Discord. So people who want to be more involved will be involved in Discord, and mutually we can communicate through live chat calls and live channel that I don't see for months and months. Mm -hmm. And if it's someone that we I've had a connection with, I will send them just a quick DM and mm -hmm. just say, "Oh, I saw this and thought of you today." Okay, mm -hmm. so like. Yeah. And generally, they won't feel like, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, they yeah. Apologize. It's mm -hmm. just like, it's, it's cool. They just like feel they seen. Exactly. Kind of thing, with no pressure. Mm. Right. And th like, that's a great example, too, because um, I don't, this won't happen until after LTN Con at some point. But um, one of the things, like, talking about just doing, making choices in the online spaces that will serve everyone and uh, create opportunities for more relationship. Me and Luke ha have separate Discord servers, but we're at the point where we're like, I don't think we can manage like two different servers and two streams. And Luke's doing LTN streams. There's a lot of like places to be. It's, you're spread thin, and so he and I are working on like um, a way to combine our servers, and so that we're just <laughs> do, like you know working as a team. And we realize like even though we loved the communities like that uniquely are in those servers. We're hoping that they will, you know, all opt in on this. But the, the goal is to like be able to pour in um, more intentionally and not just like, oh, here and then here and then here and then here. And so, um, and that's all in the hopes of like making people feel loved and not about like growing our numbers in our separate Discord servers. 
Um, I did have a joke with him for a little while when I started streaming about like having like wanting to have more followers than him, but that was truly just a joke. That was truly just a joke. <laughs> uh, but yeah, anything else? I'm also feeling a little bit of imposter syndrome. I'm just gonna be honest up here, but <laughs> thank you. Thanks, thanks, thanks. A, vir a virtual pineapple. So then, if I'm able to mod, uh, have a bit of my job kick me out of the out of Twitch, <laughs> and that's really unfortunate. But when I'm there and someone new pops up, and if she's busy, mm -hmm. then there's always someone like either like Mark will do a few other people that are. I'm busy too. Yeah, but totally fine. If there's enough mods, someone will come in and just use it and give them a pineapple, or if it's another. Yeah. College. You're crazy. So, I'm so bad at multitasking. <laughs> yeah, I think that that's a big thing. Yes, like, and that's um, when I was comparing like the host versus the hosted. Like, you know, you can you really can only do so much as one person if you're if you're it's if, if you're the one that's like streaming or um, you created the Discord server or whatever whatever the context may be. You created the Facebook group. Um, you as one person can only do so much, but if you create system, if you take the um, time to create systems that empower people in your community to also like lean in and like love and serve others, like that goes a long way. So yeah, like Al or any or Lark or anyone that um, is able to in in my streams are like able to love others, even if I'm like f fixing something I spilled or some I don't know something. <laughs> <laughs> I think we did, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, if there's any more food, you guys go for it. Um, thank you for being here. I don't really know how to wrap this up, but thank you. <laughs>